Well, the Oscars were weird this year. Uh, yeah. That feeling when a fox is screaming at you and you wonder why we can't all just be friends. Yeah, no kidding. The feeling when you have a little too much bubbly on a Sunday night and Monday is the literal worst. That feeling when you go to a restaurant and see tater tots on the menu and wonder if you've made a grave mistake. <laughs> have such a good day. Hello world, welcome to have such a good day, the show that wants you to do just that. Episode 142, y'all, and Sarah, you're still sounding a little rough this morning. Did you have a, a big night? <laughs> I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a huge a night. A squeaky. I, I am a little, I feel a little, I feel a little rough around the edges, Heather. Um, I uh, watched the Oscars last night with a friend, and we're recording this on a Monday, so it was last night, and... Uh, you know, we we had some champagne and we, we were like, OK, you know, let's make this fun. You know, like we'll, mm -hmm. we'll have a little party, you know, and. Oh, boy, was it entertaining, too. It was. <laughs> it was. Uh, it was. I mean, I don't know. It Like, I don't even I think I felt like the show and we're, we're probably everybody has either you either watch the Oscars or you heard that, you know, there was some kind of weird stuff that happened. And uh, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but you know, whatever it's the Oscars. But but uh, yeah, we were um, we were ha having some bubbly and just having some fun. And I just I am too old to be able to like power through the day after having mm -hmm. a little too much champagne. And champagne gives me a terrible headache. And I know this it does. because it really does. Every time I go to a wedding, I'm like, ah, oh, why? Why are we doing this again? Well, think about how Will Smith must feel today. You know, I'm not sure he feels all that bad. I yeah, don't know. Maybe not. It's, yeah, I don't. It's hard to I, say. I don't. I I don't know. I um, <laughs> we uh, we were we were watching it on um, YouTube TV. That's how I get. That's how I get uh, network stuff. And we were rewound it like several times. Like, wait, is that is this a bit? Like, we were so yeah. confused. <laughs> I, I don't love think this, so. how stunned Chris Rock was. He was like, uh, uh, like he kept looking around the room. Like, yeah, what like, do I what, do? What happened? What yeah, do I it, say? Do I? <laughs> Poor guy, he, man. He seemed, um, I mean, he seemed to recover pretty well, all things considered. Yeah. You know, and maybe yeah, he thought he it did. was a bit like, I don't, you he, know, I, think I don't kind of did it first. He was like, wait, what, what just happened? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it was funny because I, I actually didn't watch the Oscars last night. I, I tend to, I don't have live television, but I, I want to re up my Hulu membership because there's a couple movies I want to see on there. And last mm. night I'm, we're all super cozy on the couch and I got all the animals on me. I can't move, you know? So I'm like, we're going through the prompts to like re up my Hulu so we could watch the Oscars. Yeah. And then of course it's asking for my credit card, which like my wallet's upstairs. Neither one of us <laughs> wants to get up and get it. And so I'm like, ah, screw this. We'll just watch Coda because I have Apple Plus TV for once. I know mm -hmm. that it's been a while since I've been saying I'm going to have the Apple Plus TV subscription. I finally have it. And now I need to get Hulu back. It's like, it's just this like constant game of like canceling, re-upping. You might as well just have all of them and just like forget about it. But yeah. how y'all doing out there? Yeah. This is the show that unpacks the absurdity <laughs> of everyday life. For your entertainment, we are all in this together. How are you guys doing out there? I hope you had a fun evening. We're happy to be here and have an hour of fun with you all. Indeedy. Yeah, it's it's uh it, it was a um it was, a, it was an eventful weekend uh, for me, and not really for like anything. I mean, sure, my little Oscar party was like, you know, it was it was two people also sitting on the couch, uh, much like uh, your 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 night, Heather. But um, <laughs> but uh, but I am ramping up for uh, D Day, uh, and that that is uh, in a few days from now, and that is when Airbnb people come back to the house for the first time since December. Uh, the wow. last the last people who were here as like actual guests, you know that I I'm I'm needing to monitor and 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 help out and stuff uh was mm -hmm. uh yeah, was had, yeah, was a couple of Sarah. a few months ago and well and there's been my landlord's uh he had family member who was staying here for a while. Various people have 
sort of come and gone um, and there's been you know, it's just like stuff to do around the house that hadn't mm -hmm. been done yet. There's a deck that needs to be fixed, etc. cetera. Um, this guy has been um, rewiring all of our like outdoor mushroom lights, you know, that come on at mm -hmm. night and, and look mm -hmm. and look pretty and help you get around. So it's been, it's been busy here, but mm -hmm. busy in a, a different way, busy in yeah. like a, Oh, the exterminators are here. Okay, like I'll deal with them and you know and like preparation just, time. Exactly. But not that feeling of oh, people are next door and mm -hmm. at any moment they may ask me where they should go to dinner tonight. <laughs> you know? Which, which is it's like not a hard thing to, you know, I can give people recommendations, no big deal, but I just haven't had that in a while and so I'm kind of stressed about it a little bit. I'm stressed yeah. about the house going back to like biz mode because we've really mm -hmm. not been in biz mode you know and i feel like oh you know it's almost april it's i've i've really i've had a nice break but now i feel off my game a little bit yeah it can be there's a demandingness that like you have to kind of get used to again you probably have to readapt but i think for me anything after like 6 p.m just irks me it doesn't really matter what it is and i am a helpful person but i just i guess when it's like after hours it starts to feel like such a burden mm -hmm. like during the day it's like yeah even if you have like a high maintenance guest it's like you're still kind of in work mode you know and i think when i get out of work mode and i want to chill and you keep getting pinged which i was last night and i will tell you about it later in the show but it was i, I don't even think i could have been watching the oscars because i was being disturbed like so many times throughout the yeah. night um i just yeah well i'll we'll discuss it later on the show but i know this one is going to make your skin crawl so you can look forward to that oh that'll be great um <laughs> yeah looking forward to that yeah so so uh, so the uh, the airbnb thing is you know it's this is part of life you know as long as i'm living here that's that's what we're doing and you know i've i've done this uh fairly successfully for a few years now so it'll just be it's kind of it's it's I don't know it's I feel like it is what almost it is like I'm going back to school or something yeah you know, where totally. I'm like, can't summer last longer no it you can't. gotta lay out your outfits on your bed right and... right yeah and like <laughs> get excited about it but it'll be okay I think one of the um one of the things and I've talked about this a million times but the things that is weirdest for me is that I'm, and when and when we get going in the season i mean it's back to back i really don't have very many days here where the house isn't full you know of people mm -hmm. but when they're when they're here uh otis is not running around in the yard that would be strange you know i mm -hmm. mean it's 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 their house right and i just kind of i do my thing so every time you know first thing in the morning it's like get the leash we're going on a walk or we're getting in the car we're going to the park or the beach mm -hmm. or whatever and that's all fine i mean i i love that but i've gotten pretty used to in the morning first thing just being like open the door go do your business and then mm -hmm. i'll see you in a little bit you know i'll give you breakfast in a little bit and you know you can go be an independent puppy and that is a really nice thing to have as an option mm -hmm. you know especially if you're moving slowly in the morning or you just kind of want to yeah. sit and do your wordle or whatever so yeah you know it's 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 fine it'll be fine speaking of wordle i know you haven't done yours yet but i am very upset because this is the first time i've ever failed it and i i really was confident that i was never gonna get there like i yeah. I'm, i have a pretty good record i have like a lot of threes a couple twos a fair amount of fours you know in a few fives and, and maybe a six or something but i did not get yeah, it you've and, never and actually the, and just the, wiped out yeah no but but like the wipeout was so frustrating because i'm not going to give anything away but i my first word was kind of eh. i got like a couple you know that were in the wrong place a couple letters in the wrong place and then my second try i got all four of them four out of five all of them so like how many options are there okay so you've got right, like five right. more tries or four more tries like how many options well there are a lot <laughs> there were like a lot of them and i did not pick the right one and i picked everything else but the right one and i'm just like uh -oh. no this isn't fair i'm i feel well, like cheated and i i've um i have it's as of this recording i haven't played today so i don't know what words yeah, we're talking luck. about but i but heather heather and i send each other our you know the the <laughs> kind of the grid right um uh -huh. and so it's like yeah i know that 
your whole thing was just like green, 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 but you didn't know what the first letter was. And it's nope. obviously a word where there could be lots of different first letters. So it's like, you didn't do anything wrong. You just, no, how would you I'm know? How could you possibly know? <laughs> yeah, I'm a good not, Wordle player. You are, you are. I, I have crapped out a few times and often, you know, sometimes I'll- it Makes you feel like a failure. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's like, you know, it's just the one game and then it's there'll be another one tomorrow and yeah. and yeah, you just move on with your life. But yeah, there have, been, <laughs> there have been times where I'm like, you know, first word, I always just like, it's like, I don't even think about the first word very much. It's just something mm -hmm. with five letters, right? Like that's blah. not That's not too crazy of a word. It's just, you know, just a regular word. You're just throwing something out there. Yeah, just get on the board. And then uh, there, there have been times where like, you know, by like the fifth try, I'm like, I just don't see it. I just don't Did you see, see it. it yesterday? Did you finally see it? The light or no? Uh, oh yeah. I don't even think I finished yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yesterday <laughs> what happens was... when you don't finish and then it refreshes? You just, that's a fail. You just, you just refresh and it's, it, it's empty. You just, okay. it doesn't okay. say that you don't it get like punish you. docked for not finishing. You just, <laughs> okay. you know, according to the game you haven't played. Oh, uh, I see. So okay. yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, the Airbnb beers are coming back to town. I'd like everybody to pray for me, and <laughs> and you know we're gonna we're gonna uh, sail the ship another season, if that's even a term that makes any sense to anybody. <laughs> Well, Sarah, I wish I could have beamed you up here this weekend because it was, you know, man, the, the, the forecasters, the meteorologists are so amusing because, you know, you, I mean, we're all very attached to looking at our weather apps, comparing weather apps. And I look at different cities that I used to live in. I have a whole slew of places that I check, not just where I live. And, you know, it'll say cloudy all day. And I'm like, ah, man. You know, we had a little dinner party on Saturday and one of the great things about where we eat our dinners at our farm table in our dining room is you have a view of the ocean and the sunset. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, because the sunset is so spectacular. And, you know, so, but then everything totally changed. It was like the weekend looked really grim and then it ended up being this gorgeous, kind of warm, like balmy weekend. And it was so great. It like really affected everything it like kind of made everything so much better and on top of it there were whales jumping out of the water right outside my window i mean that is wild okay so i've seen whales when i'm on vacation in hawaii i think in the bahamas i mean multiple times in tropical places which mm -hmm. you know it kind of comes with the territory you know you're on vacation you see wildlife but being able to where while you're finishing your taxes at your computer and you're seeing whales, you know, their spouts kind of like spray out of the water and you're seeing their tails flip around right outside your window. That is just, it's a trip. So I spent a lot of time, you know, I would be at my computer, I'd see, you know, some action out there and I would pop over my window seat with my binoculars and I'd be like staring out there for a while. And what was really cool, you know, whales actually travel in groups in like families and they call them pods, which I don't mm -hmm. think I knew that, you know, like different groups of animals are called different things. It's not just yeah. school. Murder of crows, or, et cetera. Yeah, murder, a dazzle of zebras, which is amazing. Whoever so came cool. up with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so there was a lot of them. There was like, I mean, I saw like four or five, you know, kind of, you know, squirreling around in the water. It was really, really cool. So some friends came over and we were sharing my binoculars and, and watching this incredible thing, so which, cool. you know. I felt so privileged, you know, like in, in some ways I feel, you know, we all take for granted where we live because we live there and it's hard to kind of wrap your head around it. Like a, like someone who's never been there before with an objective point of view, you right. know, my, my dad owned this property for 20 plus years. So I had been here a lot and in some ways I, I think, you know, I can't help it, but take it for granted. And then when I get other people you know, my guests and my friends and people who visit say that I live in paradise, which people say a lot, you know, and I'm like, sometimes it's paradise, like on a beautiful day. And, yeah. you know, when I'm not sloshing around in the mud and, and everything, it can be. And I, I feel that privilege, but it's interesting how at the same time you can feel like a restlessness, which is maybe a sub subject for another time. But in terms of the whale watching, so apparently they, 
they actually migrate north, like between kind of like this month and summer, like June ish. So they're migrating north. And then from September to January, it's like there's a lot of whale watching up here. It's like takes up a lot of the year. They actually travel south and go to Baja. Um, and it, they're very sweet. Apparently, they're very friendly and they seem to like humans. I feel like they're kind of watching us as we watch them. And mm -hmm. they're just they're just like a really neat creature. And I, I, I am fascinated by them. It would be neat to go out on a boat. I would love to maybe see them closer, but I'm just, I'd have to like really um, down some Dramamine or something because I would totally get sick. But anyway, uh, yeah. just watching wildlife is a gift. And yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, trying to really lean into the good stuff because I have been very restless, but then I'm like, I have a weekend like this weekend where, you know, we had people over, we had a, a good time. We went on a couple amazing hikes and played with the dogs and, you know, just like explored. And I did a ton of gardening, by the way. In fact, I, I feel like I haven't like leaned into that in over six months. I mean, it's been winter, so it makes sense, but you know, now things are blooming. My poppies are popping and I went out there and it was warm. And I mean, I wore a t-shirt and I felt really into it, like genuinely not like in my head and like waiting to just be done to get back in the house. Like I was actually like really in the moment, planted yeah. a ton of food, um, you know, did a bunch of hoeing, you know, like I do. And uh, yeah, it was just, <laughs> it's really great. I, I guess it's like, this was a weekend to relish, you know? Yeah, that sounds really nice. Uh, yeah. That's, uh, I, uh, I'm having, I don't know, I mean, gardening 101, uh, but uh, I'm having some weird issues with some of my succulents that have been, at, they're, they're planted outside, but they're in planters. They're not, mm -hmm. they're not in the ground, because um, we have weird soil here, but, but uh, they are, they are on the struggle bus, uh, for sure. And what I are they know, doing? They're just almost, it's almost like they're rotting. Um, yeah, and they might they have gotten had, too much water. Well, I mean, the, it, it did, it, it, it has rained here and there a little bit, you know, for, mm -hmm. for the last uh, few weeks, but not that much. Um, I think, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe they're getting too much water. I'm not sure. There's not really anything I can do about it. Um, it's kind of like, I mean, they're my plants, but it's like, I've put them in various areas of the yard where I want other people to enjoy them as well. Sure. You know, they're just, you know, when you drive up, you're like, oh, cool plants. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, they don't look very good right well, you now. You know, you also, you need to, uh, succulents have to be kind of changed out from time to time because they, yeah. you know, they grow too stocky and you kind of have to cut them and then re you, you kind of keep replanting them. Yeah. But you either cut them down and then you, you stick them back in kind of thing. Um, but that they're, it's like they're low maintenance in a way, but they're kind of high maintenance too, because you, you do need to re, uh, cut them and, and replant them fairly often because they grow and then yeah. they get kind of ugly, you know? Yeah. I've got some, um, I don't even know, uh, what the name of the plant is, but in my bathroom, I've got this little window, uh, where I've got little plants kind of at the mm -hmm. window and yeah, I've got, I've got one of those those succulents that you're talking about where it's like i need to cut it back but i feel mm -hmm. so bad because it's I like I, it's it's okay right now but like this already happened last year where i know how mm -hmm. it's gonna end it's just it's getting too like spiny and tall yeah. you know mm -hmm. and it's it's not it's not gonna survive but i yeah i feel i always feel bad cutting back plants. i feel bad too but you know i have noticed because we had we pruned our fruit trees uh, a few months ago and I tend to go out there, we've talked about this before, like the deadheading thing where certain plants need to be cut back. They yeah. will produce more. And, and it's really true. I've noticed it. I see it out there. We have um, tons of blossom trees. I mean, you should see this time of year, it's so incredible. It's, they're so fluffy, so magical. And there we, we pruned them. I mean, the, you can tell that they're happier. You know, my, my roses, I mean, you should see how rich kind of emerald green the leaves are like I can tell we're gonna have a really good rose season because they seem so happy because we trimmed back all the dead stuff and 
You know, they like that. It's like getting a haircut. (laughs) Yeah. You feel more alive after a haircut. Yeah. You're just like, but I want to grow my hair. But it's like, yeah, but you got to cut it to grow it. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. You got to cut that dead stuff off. Yeah. We have, we have, some of that stuff is going on at this property too, because there's a lot of landscaping that I don't really personally deal with, but, but, um, you know, I, I take stock of, uh, and, and, you know, there's landscaping crew and they are pretty brutal in the winter. Yeah. It's just, it's just, those months are my least favorite months because I feel like it's just, everything looks dead, mm-hmm. but it's already, um, so, so many plants, even like I had, uh, some annuals in a planter that's like, uh, along my, my um the stairs to my house and i mean i just just let the whole thing go you know over Mm -hmm. the winter i'm like yeah you know annuals whatever we had some we had some nice moments together with my uh with my petunias but Mm -hmm. uh but but two of the plants because i have two different planters have come back in a great like they look better than they did when i planted them last Mm -hmm. year and Mm -hmm. so i'm like I don't, I'm pretty sure this was an annual, um, but uh, yeah, t- just a happy plant. Still surviving. Yeah, that happens, that happens here too. Like I'll even notice one that was supposed to be a perennial and just kind of died, you know? I mean, yeah. it's, it is really interesting to see how certain things grow. In fact, I doing, doing an experiment, I have this little like Mexican lime tree. I mentioned that I got this a while ago and I put it, you know, citrus generally needs like a lot of heat. And so we have a lemon tree in our greenhouse that does very well. It's like a Meyer lemon tree. And so I put the lime tree in a pot, like in a, in a wine barrel. So it was like a pretty big barrel and it just wasn't very happy. It's been in there for, you know, four to six months. So yesterday I took it out and put it in a smaller pot, like a terracotta pot and put it outside Mm -hmm. thinking that maybe it just needs more of that ventilation. Cause like the greenhouse can get very humid. Um, right. And yeah. so, yeah, so a lot of times it's just like your climate, like where you live and like certain things just don't do well, you know, like I'd love to, I'd love to plant like a Japanese maple, but like, I don't think that they like being super close to the salt air, like to the ocean. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so stuff where you have to like do the research and, you know, figure out what, what, what would, what would be happy growing in your, your area. Yeah, we have a Meyer lemon tree here uh, as well, and they're kind of, a, you know, winter producers. So, mm-hmm. but you know, I <laughs> haven't bought a lemon in quite some time. It's great. Love that tree. But um, I've never, I've never had a thriving citrus tree before ever. I was always mm-hmm. under the impression, because I think of like Florida oranges, like it's like, mm-hmm. it's got to be like real sort of almost like swampy hot. Mm-hmm. and more of like a year-round thing but uh citrus actually does really well around here i have lots of neighbors who just like put baskets of lemons you know out on the street like take it's one the best i don't like buying lemons i don't know there's certain things where i'm like eh. i mean i i, I totally <laughs> am cool to buy avocados because i'm not about to have an avocado tree but but yeah i i prefer to pick my lemons if possible <laughs> it's a it's a nice feeling yeah it, it is. is it's it's a it's a very nice feeling well, what is not a nice feeling, Heather, is um, knowing that the rat problem, the ongoing rat problem, uh, is not going away. And oh, that no. is what we're dealing with here. Yeah. So are they at your house or at the rental? Um, it's the rental. My, so my, my, where I live is on top of a garage. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm up quite a bit. Not that, mm-hmm. you know, rats can't get into uh, upstairs areas but if it, there were a problem it would probably be the garage which is on the lower level and i mean the garage is it's actually it's hard to explain but it's built into a hill so it's mm-hmm. like yeah there are there are a couple walls that are open to the elements but it's kind of impacted you're you're when i'm in here which i am right now you you definitely feel like you're underground kind of uh yeah. so i and and there's never been an issue in here um but <laughs> and it was great uh when i was doing daily tech news show last week at some point uh i got this text message out of nowhere from these exterminators that we've used before in the past and they were like yeah so and so is on his way just giving you a courtesy you know text where i'm like what? We don't even have an appointment today. 
Like, mm -hmm. and I'm busy. Like I can't even, luckily somebody else was here. And so they were able to kind of take over the supervision of, of whatever. But, uh, the, the, the good news is that, that well, there isn't really any good news. The bad news is that <laughs> there's still, there's still, there's still rats. <laughs> there's still rats. <laughs> and what I, so I've got, um, and please stop me if I've told the story before, because sometimes I feel like my life is just a big groundhog day, but, um, <laughs> I have, so Otis has like wet and dry food and the dry food comes in this like ridiculously large bag. And for a long time when like chewy.com would drop off stuff, you know, I get a bunch at a time so that I don't have to order things all that often. And I would, I would. Uh, stash it kind of on the side of the garage where nobody can see, you know, just kind of storage mm -hmm. stuff. And eventually I noticed that the bags were getting ripped into by who knows who, nocturnal animals. Um, could be a, any kind of animal really. But I was like, oh man, that's no good. So I moved them into the garage, the bags, and it's been smooth sailing. So I was like, yeah, I just, that's, we, we figured out our solution. But I noticed that there was a, a rip you know, a, uh, like a rip that definitely came from a little skunk mouth or something um, that that was in the bag inside the garage, a.k.a. my studio, where I spent quite a bit of time. So I was mm -hmm. like, OK, you know what I mean? Like I like do my VR workouts in here. Like, I mean, there's I I'm in here during the day, not overnight. I'm never in here overnight, but during the day, I'm, I'm in here quite a bit and I've never seen an animal in here. And so I was sort of like, okay, uh, I can obviously store this even better, but the short story is that some kind of animal, and it's probably a rat, uh, is getting in here and, you know, chowing down overnight, and I have to, like, come to terms with that fact. Even <laughs> if they're not here when I'm in here, because they're staying away, you know, mm -hmm. it's just like, a little creepy crawling. Knowing that they're there, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I actually, I have to say, I've come a long way with the creepy crawlies and I, I want to knock on wood because I don't want something to happen now to throw me off because, you know, I'm putting on my shoe and there'd be a spider in there or something. But I feel so much less timid. Like I was telling you guys a few weeks ago that I, I don't really like check under my pillows as much. And I'm, I'm not as sort of like heebie jeebie when I, when I see a a web, but I did see a neat web in the garden. You know, I haven't really seen a lot of scary looking spiders lately, knock on wood, except for I did see a pretty creepy one in the garden. It was like, it, was a, it wasn't a brown recluse, but it was a, a pretty fat bodied brown guy. Mm -hmm. It was pretty, but it, it did make me kind of, oh God, it, just, just imagine them crawling on you you know it's like when i when i <laughs> no, when my yeah, mind goes I don't want there to. <laughs> yeah I, I like to see it from afar that's fine but i think that kind of put it back in my head that yeah there's probably some creepy spiders around here and you mm -hmm. just don't see them because they you know they're hiding from you i mean they're let's be honest like they're more scared of us than we're of them but but we don't have to talk about spiders <laughs> i know i know <laughs> T tina Tina, we 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 get it. <laughs> That's right. One of our uh, discorders we're moving on. Uh, is is. I mean, there are a lot of people who don't like spiders. Tina's like, no, I I don't like them more than <laughs> like the, the regular average person. Yeah, exactly. So we're we'll uh, we'll keep I it think, pushing. But yeah, the the I think I think Tina and I should go head to head. Like, who has the worst arachnophobia? Like, how do you even gauge that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I, I reality show. I've come a long way too. I. We had, I mean, full disclosure, it's like when I first moved in here, because it is so wooded, I mean, really, it's, it's as yeah, woodsy you're in the as, woods, yeah, you? I've, I, you know, I've, I've ever lived and it's super pretty, but I always assumed, okay, there's just going to be a lot of critters and I'm going to mm. have to deal with it. Now, clearly there are a lot of critters and I'm dealing with them in, in, you know, by putting out rat traps and things like that. And that isn't even really like the idea that. I don't know. I mean, some people are like, oh my God, rats. Where I'm like, I don't even hate the rats. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. They're just kind of doing their thing, whatever. But, uh, mm -hmm. but it's just, it's, it, it's, you can't, you can't have 
you know, be sharing your, <laughs> your, your house with rats. It's just, just not going to work. But no. I was so worried that there would be so many more critters, like insects kind of thing. Yeah. And I had, I had a couple years, uh, it was a good run where I was like, you know, I mean, considering how, you know, where I live and how wooded it is and just sort of overgrown and, you know, just ivy everywhere and, and all that stuff, there just really aren't a lot of insects at least that like bother me in any way but it was it was a tough uh it was a tough winter with ants there are a lot yeah. of ants uh in my house and i just never had that issue before and that's pretty gross you know yeah ants no, are just, just they're just annoying and they they're, they're annoying they're and they're trying to build their armies and like i kind of respect them for that but it's like you just can't <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't be in my kitchen or my bathroom or anywhere else. I wonder like, if they are capable happen. of appreciating your respect. <laughs> well, I, I, um, I do my best to, uh, to, to speak to them as equals, uh, and, <laughs> and, you know, so that they know I'm okay. I'm about to kill half of you, but it's not because I want to, it's just because you got to go somewhere else. You know, this is not the place to build your army, but, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a little bit, a little bit of a, it's been a tough season, I think. It yeah, was, it was a, it was a tougher winter than than what I remember, and maybe it's just because life is hard. Life is hard. Life is pain. But you know, Sarah, maybe we should both thank our lucky stars that we don't have scorpions. Oh my god, and cockroaches. Yep, yep. I remember my brief stint in New York. I lived on the Bowery, and I am a California girl, so like cockroaches were just not really something that I would see regularly. I mean, maybe when I would go to like Chinatown in San Francisco, but yeah, I never really had a lot of experience with them, but I remember getting up, you know, to turn on the light in the bathroom in the middle of the night and they would scurry and same with the kitchen sink. And I just thought it was the f grossest, like, I can't even describe it, the grossness. It's, it's creepy. Yeah. There's a creepiness about it. The way they well, sound. Because you, it's like, you know that before you turn on the light that like they're out sniffing around right yeah and, and they then they'll like, like go dirt. to they'll go to their little corners and hide but it's like you know that when you go to bed it's like they're like okay it's they're out and the about coast is clear yeah and they, right. they like food scraps and like dirt so it makes you think that you're just on a pile of dirt like you're just living in squalor <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I never, um, I've never, well, I've never lived in New York, um, and I know cockroaches exist lots of other places too, but when I lived in, uh, Echo Park, neighborhood of LA that Heather and I both used to live in, I lived right across the street from an elementary school. And I think just because there was like a cafeteria and just, you know, kids and food and whatever, mm -hmm. there was just, there was a lot of just food around. Right. Yeah. And there were, and Otis and I, Otis the dog and I would walk around the block at night. Um, you know, we just like walk around the school and the cockroaches were definitely out at night. And I remember my mom visiting once and like, she was like, whoa, what's that? And I was like, oh, cockroaches, you know, because of the school. And she was like, <laughs> what do you mean? Cockroaches because of the school. And I'm like, I don't know. I think they just <laughs> like food. I don't know. I don't get it. They're not in my house, thank goodness. But yeah, it was, it was not my favorite thing. Um, Otis didn't seem to give them pay them any mind so it was all good but yeah you know they're the wide range of critters on this planet i i do prefer whales to cockroaches for the record yeah <laughs> i was i was um real quick uh because you were talking about whales and i wish i remember the name of the woman but she was on this npr show that i was listening to and it was like this really cool story about how she's a like a professional swimmer diver mm -hmm. you know hangs out in the ocean and like had found a baby whale that was clearly oh, I lost think I heard this. yeah yeah and like and she kind of hung out out there for some time because she I was that because story. the whale was like somewhat connected to her because yeah. the whale was you know looking for its for its uh for its parent and mm -hmm. um yeah it was, i don't know it was just fascinating i thought i'm not a strong enough swimmer to be able to mm -mm you know, do something like that. But like, how cool. Very cool. Like to be able to connect that way with with our critters of this this earth. I mean, I think it's it's a religious experience. I, I for me, it is. Yeah. But um, but but switching gears a little bit, I, I'm kind of going back to some of the stuff we were talking about at the top of the show. I don't want to get too grousy because I know Sarah and I can can be that way. But uh, <laughs> we like to live in our grouse sometimes. 
It's comforting. It's comforting. But uh, I know that this particular Airbnb guest story would be your worst nightmare, Sarah. So okay. lay it on me. Listen, I know, <laughs> I know this is part of the gig. Okay. Like it's a gig. It's part of my gig. I have another job too, but this is my little side hustle. And I am a helpful, caring person. I care about my guests. I'm helpful and caring, as I said. <laughs> there are these occasional guests that I don't know if the word a abuses is correct but like i feel like a little bit abused like my help my friendliness feels like it's being taken advantage of and they just i think it's this level of helplessness that people have where i'm trying to trying to be helpful and then they're being extra helpless and you feel like you're just not meeting halfway and they're uh -huh. not being malicious but but it feels like they're leaning on you really hard and you don't even know them you've never even met them I mean, you right. never met them in person. And so this one guest in particular, I could tell you can sniff it from a mile away if they're going to be pulling your apron string for a few months before they show up. And yeah. you know, obviously I'm not going to name this person, not going to call them out, but two months, two months plus before her stay date, you know, she's pinging me about, she has some questions, you know, that yeah. happens. Cool. Sure. But like lots and lots of questions. Like, can you tell me where we can do laundry? Do we need to bring quarters? Do you have charcoal? Like stuff that is clearly stated on our listing. Yeah. A lot of weird questions that I won't even get into. And then if two months ago, she asked if I had any helpful hints to building a fire in a wood burning stove because they've never done it before and they would love some pointers. And this was months ago. So I'm like, well, like hit me up, you know, before you get here, when we get a little closer and maybe we can come over and show you you know, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. So I was just like sort of anticipating that day, you know, down the road. I kind of forgot it was her. I realized it was her when I got a ping bef a few days before their arrival saying that she would like to get her selfie stick that she ordered on Amazon delivered to the property. And can she do that? So I explained to her that USPS does not come down the driveway, but she'd have to set make sure it's sent via UPS or FedEx. And, you know, I kind of gave her some directions. I mean, she had a bunch of follow-up questions and I, I hope I quelled that situation. <laughs> There was a lot of back and forth. By then, I'm just a little bit exhausted and she's not even here yet. Right. You know, and I do, I get that not everybody knows how to build a fire. I, I totally get it. But it is kind of a weird thing to explain in words, like via email, you know? So last night, so we're, we're trying to watch Coda, that movie. We're discussing this in, mm -hmm. in Discord. Yeah, one, best picture winner. Best picture. You know? Right. Very good movie. Very feel good. I cried. It was wonderful. Yeah, I did too. And so we were, I was really engrossed in this movie. And around like 5 36 o'clock she pings me she's like we're here it's so great well, there was an accident on 101 that's why we were late you know a lot of detail <laughs> hey so you know like do you can you explain to us like how to use a stove and da 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 we're like in the middle of making dinner and i'm like yeah well you know what if i have my boyfriend like pop over there we're about to eat dinner but like i can have him pop over right now you know we're, we're having a back and forth didn't hear back yeah. from her at all so i'm like oh they're probably fine Hour and a half later, I get a ping saying, yes, that would be great if you could come by. And this is like eight o'clock now. It's like, yeah, we ate dinner, like, we're well, cozy on the, the couch. the offer it's is like, not really an offer anymore. It's not, no. And so I was just like, yeah, sorry. We're like, we're, we're at dinner. We, you know, it's not going to happen tonight, but sometime tomorrow. And in the meantime, she's still kind of asking me questions. And so what I did was I sent a step-by-step -step guide plus links to a very straightforward YouTube video. And it clearly wasn't enough. Yeah. So there's kindling, yeah. there's wood, there's paper. We supply everything, you know, and, and, and listen, you can Google this stuff. There's like YouTube videos on everything these days. And I guess right. she wants to have her hand held. I get it. But like throughout the night, I mean, for me after hours, it gets a little more peevy because I'm just like, I'm trying to relax. And anyway, so after it was like, oh my, I mean, it was encroaching on nine o'clock. Okay. And I keep getting disturbed throughout watching Coda. And she sends me this long ping with a play-by-play -play with photos saying, mm -hmm. here's what we did. We, we did this, we opened the flu, we did this. Do you think we did it right? With like a bunch of photos. And I was <laughs> like, this is so funny. Like, is this a joke? Like, so I reminded them that they actually have a wall heater if they don't feel comfortable with the stove. And this morning there was a long note about what they're doing today, but that they'll be home after seven which is not convenient for us, as I've said, if they could still have my boyfriend come over. So she's here for a week. 
it's really this thing I've been thinking about this sort of balance of helpfulness versus helplessness. And yeah. I think y'all can tell that I have Invisalign in my mouth. I'm having a hard time talking this morning. Um, you, sound, but, uh, you sound fine. Yeah. All right. But uh, but yes, good. How how is the Invisalign going, by the way? Well, I mean, we're we're about a month in now, right? Oh God, I started in December. <laughs> we're oh, almost four sheesh. months in. No yeah, yeah, kidding. yeah. I think. I actually Where's noticed the time go, Heather? Oh, down the toilet. I'm telling you. But uh, <laughs> but yeah. it gets it gets flushed into the turd shoe. <laughs> But one last thing I'll say about this guest is that the joke was, well, if the cabin burns down to the ground, you did it wrong. And I almost wanted to say it as like a funny joke, but I'm like, nah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I know. Some, some Sometimes humor like that is lost on a guest. Yeah. I, I, I know that feel. I know that feeling of most of the time, you know, I, I always explain to people is like, if you do any sort of property management and you live on site which heather and i both do so you know we have mm -hmm. that in common it's you're yeah you're always kind of waiting you know okay what's gonna be what something's gonna go wrong and they know i'm here so they're you know gonna ping me about it and if i'm not here it's even worse because then mm -hmm. i have to you know drive back to the house and like you know get something fixed, et cetera, et cetera. But there, you also, so there's that. There's just like stuff that people don't understand or, you know, they, they need some directions on. But then there's, yeah, there's also the people who are kind of like, they're giving you a lot of information about like, so here's what we're gonna do today yeah um, and we'll be back at this time and i'm like mm -hmm. we don't have plans y'all like yeah you, you do whatever you want you come and go you you know this is this is this is this is your domain while you're here but it's also sort of cute mm -hmm. and sometimes i you know the people who are yeah like letting me know here's how many cars we have and you know here's what time we're gonna arrive it's like it's kind of it's kind of cute in a way even though I'm like, okay, well, we're not gonna like hang out once you're here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we will 100% ex exchange pleasant pleasantries, that sort of thing. But yeah, I in a perfect world, you and I don't interact at all. Besides, yeah. you know, the, yeah, the very exactly. bare minimum. And it's it's not because I don't want to meet strangers. It's just after you have enough strangers. I mean, Heather knows this intimately well. It's like it all just blends together. It's, yeah, it does. You can't hang out with everybody. Well, it's also hard because I think some people will be like, hey, Heather, how's it going? I'll just see me on the property or they will contact me via email and I write back more business like and I realize, oh, they stayed here last year. And I think that they wanted a more it wasn't like I wasn't friendly. But I, it's hard for uh -huh. me to keep track of everybody. I mean, yeah, I want to make everyone feel special, but I'm also just like this, this. It's a bit of a churn, you know. It's like I can't remember people's everybody. Like even if I see their faces, I mean, some of them I do remember. But I think as the years go on and I have more and more regulars, I will remember them. Um, but yeah, it's just I see so many people. So I mean, we had a we, we had a family a couple years ago. It was my first year here. A family that had stayed however long they stayed mm -hmm. and i don't remember even really interacting with them at all and uh you know whatever and then they they made a return trip and when they booked it you know they said oh you know it's our favorite house oh my gosh we had so much fun last time so i'm sort of like yeah i don't your stay was unremarkable to me. Nothing mm -hmm. bad happened but mm -hmm. i didn't you know i don't even think i met you you know so like great and they came again and you know i really it was the same thing it's like they were very there was a lot of flourish going on <laughs> with like the the booking of the of the totally. property but then when they're here they're just like i mean they're not talking to me at all which is fine but it's mm -hmm. it's funny how i'm like yeah i mean these you you have these people who feel like uh i don't know it feels like their home to them in a way where they like it so much they want to come back. I mean, repeat mm -hmm. guess is, you know, it means they really liked it and that's great. But, but at the same time, I'm like, and I don't even know you. <laughs> we've had, <laughs> we've had one group since I've lived here that have been here three times and they are actually really friendly, but it's like, it's, it's strange to me. It's like, they've had like a couple Thanksgivings here and it's obviously, you know, a very special place to them. And it's like, mm -hmm. And yet I don't know them at all. I don't know anything about them. They're just, you know, 
Mm -hmm. uh, ships in the night. Yep. Yeah, it, it's a strange experience running these things. And I like it too, though. I mean, it's like like anything, it, there's, there's good and bad for sure. Yeah. Well, you know what is good? Uh, our patrons. <laughs> and not bad. <laughs> you are not bad. If you are one of our patrons, we thank you profusely. And if you would like to become a patron, uh, patreon.com slash have such a good day is where you can find out more about how to do that uh, for as little as $1 a month. Um, and if you if you can part with $5 or more per month, um, you can get access to our Discord where we're chatting in there. Um, we're, we're all pretty good pretty good pals at this point and uh we'd love we'd love to have more of you if that's the sort of thing that uh strikes you as fun and fanciful <laughs> fun and fanciful i like that <laughs> coming from somebody who drank a bottle of champagne last night <laughs> i did not drink a bottle of champagne my god i had some of the bottle of champagne uh just <laughs> enough to not okay feel half a bottle <laughs> it was ish yeah it's, you know, it's kind of kind of how it works. But yeah, uh, yeah uh, if you if you have questions, comments, thoughts on anything that we talk about on the show, hi at have such a good day dot com is where you can send that email. Uh, and we we hope to have more patrons uh, next week. We always we always try to shout you out and give you some love when you join the flock, so to speak. Uh -huh. So so the yes, pod. Uh, yeah. And and for for those of you who do listen to the free show. That's always an option for you. You might hear ads. Uh, patrons get ad-free shows. So that could be another perk that uh, if you don't know about is an option for you. Well put, Sarah. Yeah, I mean, the Discord is our little uh, family. It's uh, kind of a 24-7 thing. We don't tend to, we've got some people all around the world, which is cool. We have a, like a global community, which I love because yeah. I like to hear what the weather's like uh, in New Zealand and Wales. It's <laughs> endless fascinating conversations with our, with our buddies on Discord. So yes, you are missing out. Um, so you should join Discord yesterday. And uh, yes, please join us. We'd love to have you. We would, we would. Uh, we we love to have all of you listening along on every show, episode 142. It's coming to a close, but we'll have 143 next week. So that's how numbers work. Yeah, and it's gonna be <laughs> and it so will be much April. Fun. It'll be a new month, Sarah. We, like you said last episode, like where did March go? March I did know. not have its time in the sun. It really didn't. Uh, yeah, March Madness was really mad. <laughs> yeah, we're, you know, we're spring, spring is springing uh, around it here, is. and it's only up and up from here, Heather. Indeed. Sarah, it was, it's great to see you, even if you're a little rough around the edges. You still Thanks. look pretty. Thanks. Appreciate that. Yeah, I, uh, I'm glad we're not doing a video episode of the show. <laughs> I'm not even wearing my contacts. I'm just, I'm just a hot mess. But that's okay. Uh, you know, whatever. The Oscars are but one thing. It's all good. It's yeah. all good. All right, everybody. Uh, thanks for listening. And until next week, I will remain Sarah. And I will be Heather forever. Have such a good day. Ciao.